Hello and welcome to this lesson on how to play the DG Melodeon. Um, I've designed this video lesson for you. If you're an absolute beginner, you may have just got hold of one of these instruments and you're wondering what to do with it. And I'm going to get you up and running with it in no time at all and playing a simple tune. I'm not going to assume any prior knowledge here. I'm going to go into it in real detail. I'm not going to get too technical with this video. Just going to simply give you what you need to get started. Uh, what we have here is a DG Melodeon. This is not a piano accordion as some people think. I've seen these described on eBay as such. It's not a concertina, but it is a Melodeon. Some people call it a button accordion, that's absolutely fine. Uh, before we get started, you need to make sure that you've got the Melodeon correctly attached to yourself. I'm using two straps, some people use one. And the idea is to get the right hand fingerboard, this part here with the two rows, kind of in the middle of your body and the left hand is kind of sticking out a bit that way. So you need to make sure you've got that right before you start. Uh, make sure you're sitting up straight in a comfortable chair. Um, and you need to undo the bellow straps. You're not sure what they are. They're these things on top. You've got one on the top, one on the bottom. You need to undo them. I've already undone the bottom one. And there's a button here. I'll show you this button, which is called the air button. It's on the left hand side. If you push it down, the bellows will come open very easily. And as soon as you let go of it, then the bellows stop moving. Uh, sometimes that's a push-in lever. This particular Melodeon is a pretty standard Hona Erica. Uh, and so that's the type of air button or air vent that it has. As I say, if you have a more expensive uh, instrument, it may be a push-in lever. It does much the same job. And we'll, we'll explain a bit more about that as we go. So you basically need to bring your bellows out just about that much. Um, it's about six or seven inches from the closed position before you start. You need to be comfortable with this instrument. If you are uncomfortable, you'll get aches and pains and nothing's going to make you give up quicker than that. So, you know, getting your straps correctly adjusted is really, really vital before you start. Make sure you are comfortable. So if you push the bellows, I'm just going to operate the air button and push the bellows like that. Obviously they close up and if you do that you are expelling air out of the bellows. If you pull the bellows out like that, you're letting air in. You can see that the, uh, the opening up, they're getting more and more air in. In either direction, push or pull, there is a flow of air through the instrument uh, and that flow of air sounds the reeds inside and that's how we get the notes. As I say, I'm not going to get too technical with this because I want to get you playing. I don't want to get you too bogged down uh, with technicalities. I'll just show you that you get a different note on the push and on the pull. There I'm pressing the same button, pushing the bellows in. Gives me this note, pulling the bellows out. Gives me that note and that's a real feature of this instrument. I mean, essentially, it's much the same as sucking and blowing on a harmonica. If you've ever played a harmonica or a mouth organ, uh, if you blow on the instrument, that's like pushing the bellows in. And if you suck on the instrument, that's like uh, pulling the bellows out. That's the analogy, and that's exactly how it works. Except that instead of sucking and blowing, you're using the bellows to create the airflow. Obviously, if the bellows are completely closed, uh, they can't move any further in, in that direction so you won't get any notes on the push you can only get notes on the pull and also if the bellows are completely expanded like this it's a long way out isn't it and here I'm pressing the button there and I can't get the pull note but of course as the bellows come in I get the push note I mean, basically you should never get into that situation when you're playing a tune where the bellows are completely pulled out or they are shut the only time you should shut the bellows is when you finish playing. I've got loads and loads of videos on YouTube about this instrument and lots and lots of lessons for you to explore. You can find out elsewhere on the internet all about the more technical aspect of this instrument and exactly how it works. Uh, but for the time being, we're going to uh, just leave it at that and move on. The bellows control the volume of the instrument. If I just press a button and push in, if I push in gently, get that kind of volume. If I push harder, you can hear the volume comes up. Uh, so all the expression, all the control on the volume is done with the pressure on the bellows, either pushing or pulling. 
Uh, it doesn't matter how hard you press the buttons, that has no effect on the volume. It, these buttons are not touch sensitive like piano notes. Um, but what the buttons do control is how long the note lasts for. Because if I press a button and come off quickly, obviously the note is short. If I press the button and keep pressing, the note will last uh, until, in this case, the bellows are shut. Like that. And of course the reverse is true. Uh, for the pull. This melodion is a DG melodion. Um, if you're not sure what yours is, um, and you should have been told if you bought it from someone, um, then you'll soon find out uh, just by comparing the notes of mine with yours. You may have um, what we call a CF melodion, or a GC, or a B flat, E flat. All of these melodions are essentially relatively the same as this, just the notes will sound different. If you've got a BC, or a C sharp D melodion, uh, that's not quite the same as this, but you should still get some ideas on how to play those instruments from this video. Some melodions have two rows on the right hand side, like this one. Some have got just one, some have got three. But keep watching if you've got a one row or a three row, because the basic idea is the same for all the instruments. The reason I'm doing this lesson on the DG melodion is that it's by far the most common here in the UK. Why is this instrument called a DG melodion, or if you like, a GD melodion? Well, it's to do with these two rows of buttons. You've got one row here, which is nearest to the bellows, and one row here, which is nearest to the outside of the instrument. The row that is nearest to the outside of the instrument is called the D row, and the other row nearest to the bellows is called the G row. The reason this row is called the D row is that for the main part, all of the notes on this row that you can get by pressing the buttons and pushing and pulling are found in the key of D major. So for instance, if I just play a little a little scale there, those notes are all found in the scale of D major. That's why this row is called the D row. On this particular instrument, there are a couple of buttons up here which are giving me different notes, but we won't worry about that for the time being. So this row nearest to the bellows, if I start on this fourth button down here, and you can hear that's a different scale, and of course that is the scale of G major, and that's why this row is called the G row, and this row the D row. So that's why we call this instrument a D, G melodium and the D row is lower pitched than the G row. In case you're wondering about these buttons at the top, on this particular instrument, uh, this top button, if I push and pull, and this one, if I push and pull, uh, they give me notes that aren't in uh, the two main keys. Uh, those notes are accidental, some uh, sharps and some other notes that I don't find in those two keys, and they're quite handy. Uh, in other tunes. Won't be handy in this tune because Twinkle Twinkle Little Star is very very simple. It won't need those notes, but that's what they're for. Um, some melodians don't have those accidentals, they have what we call low notes, extensions of the scale of the two rows. But again, you know, this is a bit too technical. Don't worry about all that because in this tune we're only going to use three buttons on the G row. This is just to get you started. I'm going to press some buttons on this G row and I'm going to push the bellows closed as I do. Now, all of those notes are found in the chord of G major. Those notes I played were G, B, D and G again. So on the push, for the main part, on the G row, all of the notes that you get by pressing the buttons are found in the chord of G major. So on the D row, if I do the same thing, I'm going to go from button four, um, I'm going to push in. Those notes I've just played are D, F sharp, A, and D. And those are all notes found in the chord of D major. If I was to keep going, you can hear it's repeated at a higher octave. Similarly on the G row. 
all of those notes are all on the G row, uh, G or B or D, and on the D row they're all D, F sharp and A. So they are all notes found in the major chord of that row. Uh, all the other notes, if I play, if I play the same buttons and pull out, uh, on the G row, it's the other four notes that you find in a scale of G major. So on the G row, those notes are going to be A, C, E, F sharp. And on the D row, if I play the same four buttons that I played earlier, those four buttons are giving me the notes that are not found in the chord of D major. Those notes are E, G, B and C sharp. But again, possibly this is too technical. Don't worry about that too much. That's just a little bit of information for you to carry forward uh, to uh, some tunes that you're going to play in the future. So why am I choosing to teach you uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? It's quite a babyish tune, you're probably thinking. Well, the reason is it's a very, very simple tune. It's probably the easiest tune I can think of. And we can get all the notes in this tune just from playing three buttons. So it's a great way to get started, to get up and running and to be able to say yes, I can play a tune on the melodeon and we're going to play the tune and we're also going to use this hand to give us some bass accompaniment and we're going to do that um, after we've learnt the tune. In fact the notes for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star are the first six notes of the scale of G major. If I play those notes for you, those six notes are going to give me all the notes I need for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and I'm going to show you how to find and how to play those notes in a moment. Um, we're going to start with the bellows open um, about six or seven inches, um, depending on the size of your melodeon. This is a fairly standard size. There are smaller, there are larger. Uh, basically, you can't start with the bellows closed because the first note is actually on the push, so you'd have nowhere to go. So use the air button. By the way, don't try and pull the bellows open or close them without either pressing a button or using the air button uh, because you may damage your instrument. So there we are, we've pulled the bellows out. And by the way, when you push and pull the bellows in and out, do it in a kind of a square way. Don't sort of do it like that, up and down in a kind of fan. Try and bring it in and out so that the instrument is kept pretty square. The air button, by the way, is an essential part of playing this instrument. It actually becomes part of the performance. But luckily, in this tune, you won't have to worry about it. Once you've opened the bellows uh, that much, um, you probably won't have to worry about it, but in subsequent lessons I will show you how to use that button uh, because it's a very important part of the performance. Do you know what I've tried over the years, all manner of tablatures and charts and diagrams for um, writing down on a piece of paper how to find the notes with the right hand, the tune notes, and to be honest, there's nothing better in my opinion than good old fashioned musical notation. I know some people are very afraid of trying to learn to read music, but actually it's very, very simple. I'm going to teach you as we go. I also have um, some instruction sheets on my website. The address is on your screen now. You can download those. You can learn all the music theory you need to play this instrument. And believe me, it's not very much at all. I would strongly recommend, if you don't already know how to read music, I would definitely learn. It's going to be much easier for you in the long term. So I've had to waffle on there for quite a long time before we get started, but I think it's all essential stuff for you um, so that things make sense. So we're going to learn the tune first. We're going to put the bass in afterwards, but the tune is going to come first. And what you need to do is to position your index finger, your second finger and your third finger on the three buttons you're going to need. Now, melodians are quite strange things. They're not all set up and tuned the same, even... DG melodians, there are differences within them. For instance, this instrument is called a fourth button start. You might remember that I said that this is a D, G instrument. This row nearest the bellows is called the G row. So where is the note G? After all, that is the first note of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Well, because this is called a fourth button start, the fourth button down from the chin, this one here, if I press it and push the bellows towards the closed position, that is the note G, okay? If you've got a third button start, you'll get the same sound by doing that, by pressing the third button. Okay, so this one here, this won't give me G, 
because mine's a fourth button start. Probably I'm going to stick my neck out here and say most, most melodians are a third button start, but more and more the tendency is to have a fourth button start. The fourth button down on this row on this instrument is D. Okay, the root note of the of the D scale. Um, but that might be the third button for you. I've actually had all my D G melodians changed to a fourth button start. Um, why? Well, basically down here we have lots of very high squeaky notes we don't often use. Um, if you have a fourth button start, it means you've got less of those and you've got more useful low notes at this end. Again, getting a bit too technical, don't worry about that. So it'll either be your fourth button down or your third. So you put your finger on that button, put your second finger on the button below that and the third finger on the button below that. So you've got three fingers lined up. We're not gonna play those buttons at the same time, but just get them lined up. Um, where are you gonna put the thumb? Well, there's two ways you can do this. You can either put the thumb on the edge. Your melodeon might have a groove in this edge which makes it comfortable to put the thumb uh, down. But mine hasn't. And in fact, when I started, I started by putting my thumb on the edge, but I moved my thumb round the back like this. Okay, it's about, I don't know, about an inch or so inside the back. You kind of grip the fingerboard between the thumb and the fingers. And by the way, curl the fingers over. Don't have them flat because obviously if they're flat, they may touch these buttons on the D row and obviously you don't want that. So I would definitely curl them over and also keep your fingernails short. You get a bit of noise when you, when you hit the buttons. That's kind of part of the charm. Don't worry, you won't be able to eliminate that noise. Some melodians are noisier than others. Clackier, as we say, they're a bit clacky, some melodians. Uh, but don't worry about that. It's kind of the charm of the instrument, as I say. So those three buttons, in, in my case buttons four, five and six, might be three, four and five. That's why I don't talk about the numbers of the buttons when I'm teaching the tune because it could be different from your instrument. Your other hand, your left hand by the way, should be through the bass strap. Notice I've got a Velcro uh, adjustment on mine. Some melodians have a little dial on the top called a rotella for adjusting the, um, the bass strap. It basically needs to allow your hand through and round onto these buttons here without being too loose. Your hand needs to be in there reasonably securely, but not so tight that you know it's really uncomfortable. You need to be able to move the hand and the thumb needs to be able to get to that air button. For the moment, we're not going to play any of these buttons. Uh, and basically, obviously, if you're going to push the bellows, you just push against the side of the instrument while you're pressing a button and the bellows will close. If you want to pull the bellows open, you put pressure on the strap and pull the bellows out that way, trying to keep it square, as I said. Obviously, you need to print out the music for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, which is two pages. You also need to print out the instructional sheet, which will give you um, some more help. So with your fingers over those three buttons, either buttons four, five, and six, or three, four, and five, press those buttons and push the bellows closed gently, see if they sound the same as mine. This is a G, this is a B, and this is a D. Now do the same thing, pulling the bellows out gently. This is an A, this is a C, and this is an E. Okay, so we have G on the push, A on the pull, B on the push, C on the pull, D on the push, E on the pull. Okay, and if your notes sound the same as that, or pretty close to that, then you've definitely got a D, G melodian. If they don't sound the same, then your melodian's in a different key. And maybe one day I'll do the same video for uh, different tunings. But for the moment, this is specifically for a DG or GD melodium. Now, look at the sheet music for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. It says above the music, it says start note equals G, G row, button three or four, finger one, that's the index finger, and push. So that's your first note. And you play that note twice. That's your twinkle, first two notes. So they're both Gs and they're both on the push. So you push 
to play the first note and keep pushing gently. Don't push too hard. Keep pushing gently to play the second note. Right, so you press the button and release it and press it and release it. Like now, if you look at the sheet music, uh, you can see above the stave G, 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 G. Right, that's not what we're doing now. That's the bass line. That's the bass note and bass chord. So ignore that for the time being. Uh, what we're playing are the actual musical notes on the stave. The stave is the set of five parallel lines. Think of those as kind of shelves for putting the notes on. And the higher the head of the note appears on the stave, the higher it sounds. These two notes are G. The head of the note is drawn over the second line up on the stave, and that note is G. Now, these notes have a filled in head and a single stem. They're called crotchets and they last for one beat each. So these two notes are the first two beats of your bar. Like that. Now, your next two notes are not on the next button down, but the one underneath that. So it's the button where your third finger is. Get my second finger out of the way so you can see this. So I've just used this finger. I'm not going to use a finger on the button below that, but I'm going to go to the button below that. Uh, for me, this is uh, button number six. It might be button number five for you. And you're going to do the same with your third finger. You're going to play that note twice. So all of the notes are on the push, and those are crotchets as well. So your four beats of that first bar are twing, pull, twing, pull. See? One, two, three, four. You push the bellows towards the closed position, but very gently. You don't need to push really hard. You can see the word push written at the beginning of that bar. And as there are no other bellows instructions for that bar, you know that the whole bar is played on the push. On the push means obviously pushing the bellows towards the closed position. There are other things on the stave, like the curly sign at the beginning, which is the treble clef, and there's a sharp sign, and there's four over four, which is the time signature. These are all technical things that I'm not gonna go into at the moment. I don't wanna sort of worry you too much. So there's our first bar. Make sure you do apply some pressure to the bellows, because you'll get quite a weak sound if you just press the button Yes, it probably will sound, but you do need to exert a bit of pressure from the left-hand side. Remember, the amount of pressure on the bellows uh, gives you the volume that you require. So if you want it really loud, push hard. If you want it fairly soft, push but not too hard. And that's what I would recommend at first. Uh, the last two notes we played in that first bar uh, they were both D's. We're going to press that button again, but this time we're going to pull the bellows in the other direction. We're going to press that button twice. Now generally you'll probably find that you need to pull a little bit harder than you push to get the same kind of volume. These notes are on the word little. They're both E's. And so far all six notes have all been crotchets. They've all been one beat notes. Let's see what we've got from the beginning. And now for the word star, we're going to play that button again. You can see the number three by the side of it. Third finger, that means. And we're going to press that button and we're going to push in. Now you'll notice the head of that note is not filled in. That's because this note is called a minim, which lasts for two beats. In fact, this note on the word star comes in on the third beat of the bar. It's held for beat three and for beat four. So if I was going to count those first two bars of music, I would count one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And there are four counts or four beats in each bar. It doesn't mean to say there are four notes in each bar. As it happens, there are four notes in the first bar, but you can see there's only three notes in the second bar you still count up to four in each bar. Each bar's got to last exactly the same time as all the rest. So far then. We 
you remember that I said line those three fingers up on the buttons you needed. For the first time we're going to need the button that our second finger is lined up on. This one here, for me it's button five, might be button four for you. We're going to go on to the next stave, the words are how I wonder. You can see the number two by the head of the note. Uh, underneath the word how it says pull. We're going to press this button twice as we pull out gently. Okay, uh, that note is C. Not because of what's written above. Remember what's written above, that's your bass line. But because this note is on the third space up on the stave, that note is C. So two of those. And then you press that button again, twice more, but pushing in. And that gives you the next two notes, which are both Bs. How I wonder. Counting one, two, three, four. So pull, pull, push, push. In the next bar, bar number four, and you can see the bars are numbered just at the beginnings of the stave. So uh, you've got on the second stave there, you've got a number three. Um, that's, that stave holds bars three and four. The next stave's got a, a number five at the beginning of it because that stave holds bars five and six. We don't number every single bar just at the beginning of each stave. So bar four, the words are what you are, and we've got this note. This is the button we started on, but instead of pushing, we're going to pull. That gives us the note A. We do that twice. And then we play the same button. We press the same button and push in the hole for two beats. And that's the note we started on, but this time it's a minim held for two beats. So let's play bars three and four. Notice how little I'm moving the bellows. I'm not trying to yank them left and right. You've only got to change the direction of the bellows slightly to get the different note from the button you're pressing. Let's play those first four bars. Let's do it together. I'll count you in with a four. So you need finger one, button four or button three, and we're going to push. And you can constantly you know, readjust your bellows by using the air button. If you feel they're closing up too much, you can always give the air button a little bit of a nudge. But for the moment, I wouldn't use it while you're playing until I show you how to do that. So after four from the beginning, I'm going to play four bars. One, two, three, four. By now, you should be getting a little bit of a feel for how much pressure you have to exert uh, with both hands. Well, like I said, it doesn't matter how hard you press the right hand, but I'm quite positive when I play, um, just to make sure I've actually pressed the button. And you get a little bit of a thump, a little bit of noise, but like I said, that is part of the charm. Let's carry on to the next two bars, up above the world so high, and this is bar five and bar six. Now in bar five, we've got two push notes, and two pull notes, and the two push notes are on the button that our third finger should be lined up with. For me, it's button number six, it might be button number five for you. Uh, the note, the head of the note, you can see, is on the fourth line up on the stave, that note is a D. We do two of those on the push. Come to the button above that with finger two, do two of those on the pull. This note is C, we have played it before. So we've got two Ds on the push, two C's on the pull, and then on the next bar, bar six, for world so high, the button you just pressed, you're going to press again and push in, and you're going to do this twice to get two B notes, come to the button above that, and press it, pull out to get the note A, and it's a minim, the head of the note is not filled in, held for beats three and four. So bars five and six sound like this. And then bars seven and eight are exactly the same, just got different words. And then the last four bars, bars nine, 10, 11, and 12, they are the same as the first four bars.
So that's the whole tune. I'm going to play it through. I'm going to count you in with a four, and I suggest you try this quite a lot, practice this quite a lot before you move on to adding in the left hand, the bass line. Okay, so finger one ready on button four or button three. After four, one, two, three, four. obviously hold that as long as you like. So you know there's quite a lot that goes in to producing those notes if you want to do it properly and you know if you can learn how to do this properly from the word go it's going to stand you in really good stead for the future. Okay let's say for sake of argument you've learned that right hand tune and you're now ready to start pushing in the left hand. So we're going to go back to bar one and you can see above the stave lined up with the right hand notes, the actual musical notes, you've got your bass line, a capital letter G, a lowercase g, a capital G and a lowercase g. Right, the capital G is the bass note and the lowercase g is the bass chord. Right, we've only got eight buttons on this left hand side and I want you to think of them as being in pairs. So I want you to find the two buttons at the bottom of this outside row, this one here and this one here. Um, if I press this button here, notice I'm going to use my little finger. If you find that too hard, then by all means use a different finger. But I'm going to use my little finger. I'm going to press that button, push the bellows towards the closed position. It gives me that lovely deep G bass. That's what we call a bass note. That's the note of G, the capital G. If I play the button, press the button above that and push in, as I'm using my third finger, um, that's the lowercase g, that's the G chord. Now when I play the bass note with my little finger, we call that um, because it gives us a kind of a um sound. And when I play the bass chord above that, that's what we call pa. You may have heard of the song from the musical Oliver, um, pa, pa. Well, this is just um, pa. So, um, pa, um, pa. Okay? Now, let's talk about the fingers. There are very many really wonderful melodeon players who actually only use two fingers or three fingers of their left hand on the bass notes. I started off by doing that. After about a year, I changed so that my little finger always played these two buttons. My third finger always played these two. My second finger always played these two, and my first played these two. Uh, to me, it was very logical. I found it hard at first, because the little finger does feel quite weak, but I personally am really glad I changed, and that's how I play now, uh, because, as I say, it's so logical, one finger per button. But if you find that too hard, uh, then by all means, use your third finger and second finger on these two buttons and these two buttons, or even your second finger and your first finger. Now you might remember your tune for that first bar went like this. Well, at the same time as doing that, you're going to play this with your left hand. You're going to play G bass note, G chord, G bass note, G chord, exactly in time with that right hand. So it sounds like this. Okay, it takes a bit of practice. Counting one, two, three, four. Notice how the bass note comes on the first and third beats of the bar and the bass chord comes on the second and fourth beats of the bar. On to bar two, the right hand here was like this. So in terms of the bellows, it was pull, pull, push. Now what we're going to do on the left hand, we're going to move over to the inside row, and we've got this note here, 
It's a little bit awkward to get to. You need to make sure your hand's through enough to get to it. Like I say, I use my little finger on this. If you want to use your third finger or your second finger, that's fine. You're going to press this button and pull out to get a C bass. And you're going to do the same thing on the button above to get a C chord. So the capital letter C is the C bass, and the little letter C, the lowercase C, is the C chord. So you've got C bass, C chord, and then you're going to play the G bass and G chord. So you're crossing rows there. You play the two C basses, the bass note and the bass chord, with the two E notes on the right hand. And then you play the two G basses, the G bass note and the G chord, while you're playing that D note of the right hand. And notice that D note of the right hand is ringing on its sustaining while you play that G bass and G chord. That's why the G chord looks like it's kind of in mid-air there. It takes quite a bit of practice in this. You know, it's quite weird I'm, as I'm teaching you this, although I've been playing, you know, quite a few years, I'm remembering how hard this was. And so what we've got so far is this. So we're going to put the bass and the tune together, and this is what we've got so far. Now, when you start using the bass notes and the bass chords, uh, the air gets used up uh, rather more quickly. Okay, because more reeds are vibrating, you need more air to uh, agitate those reeds, so you will find that your bellows will close up uh, much more quickly. So, you know, you might need to bring them out a little bit further to start off. Okay, on to bar three. Uh, you've got your C bass, C chord, G bass, G chord. So exactly the same bass line that you played in bar two, but obviously the right hand is different because you've got two C's and two B's. Now, on to bar four. And you remember the two buttons we used first of all in the left hand, we were playing a G bass and a G chord. If I play those same buttons but pull out, I get a D bass and a D chord. You can see that on bar four, capital letter D, D bass, little letter D, D chord. So I do a D bass, D chord, and then a G bass, G chord. Same buttons, but pushing. So with the right hand I've got, Remember the right hand was two A's and a G, finger one all the way through. And again that G is a minim held for two beats, so while you play your G bass G chord. So it gives you this. So from the beginning, one, two, three, four. and positive don't try and rush it try and get a nice even sound and push and pull the bellows positively but not going too mad you don't need to yank them around and if you do that you might end up hurting yourself if by this point you're starting to feel a bit tired by all means switch the video off and have a rest have a cup of tea and come back to it because it's you know it's, it's quite tiring and you will find that and I would stress don't practice for too long at first it's a very physical instrument this. I started this instrument at the grand old age of 58 and I, you know, I found it pretty hard at first. Uh, it, it can take its toll on your uh, joints and your muscles. So bar five, the bass line is G bass, G chord, C bass, C chord. As you play D, D, C, C with the right hand. G bass, G chord, D bass, D chord, as you play B, B, A with the right hand. And bars seven and eight, same as five and six. Obviously it's very important that you can reach that C bass. Now, a lot of people can't reach that with their little finger. I'm fairly lucky, I've got very long fingers. So by all means, if you're struggling with that little finger, by all means change it for the third finger. Use your third finger on the bass note, second finger 
on the bass chord or maybe even second finger on the bass note and first finger on the bass chord. By all means, do what you need to do. Um, I would suggest a compromise is to use these three fingers. But as I say, you know, if you possibly can use that little finger, you know, I strongly recommend it. So bars five, six, seven and eight sound like this. And then the last four bars, bars nine, ten, eleven, twelve, are the same as the first four bars. the very last note of the tune, that G, you can see that the bass line on top, the lowercase g and the capital G are stacked one on top of the other. That's because what I want you to do is to play, play them together like that. So your last bar will be like this. You're actually pressing those two buttons together so you've got a G bass and a G chord together because you don't want to end up on a par on just the chord because it ends things up in the air, you want a nice, solid ending. So I'm going to play the whole tune through now. If you've got to the point where you can play the bass and the tune together, you'll have done really well. It might take you quite a few hours practice to get to this point. But if you think you can, then by all means play along with me as I play it now. I'm going to count you with a four. Reminder, get your finger on the bass note that you need, the G bass. Make sure the bellows are pulled out. Make sure your first finger, your right hand, is on the note G, which is either button four or button three. I'm going to bring you in with a count of four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> quite a long time, longer than two beats. And I gave a little a bit of a surge with the bellows there to get that classic melodian accordion ending. So, you know, it's a fantastic instrument. There's loads of fun. It's a very expressive instrument. And if you practice it, uh, then there's all kinds of wonderful things ahead of you. Um, on my website I have loads and loads and loads of Melodian lessons, a tunes a bit more exciting than Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So by all means do check them out. If you've got any problems or any questions there's a contact form uh, on my website. The address is on your screen now. Do get in touch, let me know how you're getting on and if I can help you in any way of course I will. So if this is your first ever tryout on this instrument, your first ever lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and I wish you lots of luck. Uh, in the future uh, as you play your melodeon. <laughs>